right, let's uh, get started here. Uh, again, the uh, horizontal loop antenna, uh, I, my motivation and my inspiration uh, came from uh, George Rydell, my uh, partner in crime here. Let's uh, get his picture back up there. There he is. Uh, George uh, has, uh, the, has a, a, a mega loop. I have a little brother, uh, and, but uh, George's presentation last year uh, was, uh, was the motivation for me because of uh, just the things he said that it did and, and some of the things that uh, um, uh, the, the characteristics of it I thought uh, were, were pretty fantastic. And so I thought that would be a great antenna. Now that being said, uh, part of my problem is the lot, of course, uh, to put up a, a, a large loop. Uh, you need some real estate, of course. Um, but, <laughs> but I have a great neighbor that moved in next door. And uh, when he saw my wires up in the air, uh, he, he took a look at that, wondered what it was all about. And I told him about ham radio and this, that, and the other thing. And I thought he, that we were gonna find another ham. Uh, wasn't interested in becoming a ham, but he was interested in uh, letting me use his trees uh, if I wanted to make a, uh, a, a larger antenna. He asked me point blank, he says, well, is more wire uh, uh, longer, bigger, better? You know, the, the, all that uh, uh, stuff that we all know about. Uh, and I said, yes, that's all better. And I said, please don't mess with me because if, if, you, if you really mean this, I'm gonna take you up on it. So uh, when he said that he was fine with that, uh, that became the uh, impetus at that point for me to do this. And uh, of course, George was my uh, right and left hand person. Um, um, he uh, helped with the uh, planning, helped with the installation, and, uh, um, and uh, I've told him all about the results and I've told a lot of people about the results as a matter of fact. So anyway, uh, it is uh, um, a great antenna and uh, we're gonna, and we're gonna talk about it here. Um, tonight's presentation, uh, this is uh, what we're gonna talk about is uh, the picture there of uh, my loop antenna uh, at the QTH. It's uh, really pretty a remarkable structure. Okay, that's called dramatic pause. <laughs> uh, it looks just yeah. like, I've seen his antenna and it looks just like that. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, this, uh, I'm not even sure that's a loop, uh, but I saw this online and I just absolutely uh, thought, wow, what a great picture. Uh, so whatever it is, uh, loop or not loop, uh, I have no idea, but uh, it uh, looked pretty impressive. So uh, anyway, tonight's presentation, we're going to talk about a couple components. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to talk about the rationale. Uh, why this loop antenna, uh, we're gonna talk design con uh, considerations. We'll talk about the pieces, parts, the components and the cost and uh, where you can get the pieces, parts and, uh, uh, and the actual construction. And then we'll uh, conclude with uh, the results and uh, we'll finalize it if there's any questions. Uh, George and I will do our best to uh, answer any questions that uh, 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 that uh, you, you all have. So uh, that's, uh, that's the scoop. That's what we'll be doing. Um, let's get right in there with the rationale. Uh, uh, and a lot of this came from George's presentation. It's an all band HF antenna. Um, George operates extremely successfully on 160 through 10 meters with his mega loop. Uh, George, if you're there, uh, unmute your mic. T t I, I forgot how big that your your loop is. I think it's like 1,200 feet or something like that. Uh, it's 1,500 linear feet. It's uh, 70 feet high, uh, made out of 10 gauge wire. Over. Okay. All right. Uh, 1,500 feet of wire. Um, 70 feet in the air. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a lot of antenna. Uh, big ear, 
uh, and uh, does a fabulous job for him. Well, I cannot do that even with the help of my neighbor. Uh, but uh, what it does do is it eliminates the need for multiple antennas. As most of we, uh, you already know, uh, when you have multiple antennas in the same space, uh, for instance, field day, uh, <laughs> uh, you have um, uh, antennas like to be alone. You know, they like to isolate themselves. Uh, and as you add more antennas into a given space, uh, they kind of uh, have a tendency to not work as well. So uh, a single antenna for all bands is, is not a bad way to go. Uh, the antenna is uh, uh, basically omnidirectional with a good signal to noise ratio. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can build it with stuff that uh, uh, you may have in your garage already. Uh, uh, it is a good DX antenna. And uh, very importantly, uh, it's XYL and neighborhood friendly. Uh, and I got a little asterisk by this thing down here, uh, can fit on most any hams lot. Well, that's sort of kind of true. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I can't believe this did this. Oh, man. Okay. Um, design consider considerations. I cannot believe that this thing did this. Hang on one second. Go to plan B. There's two concepts that you can go with this and um, two, two basic philosophies. The first thing, the first thing is um, you can put up as much wire as you can, as high as you can to enclose the maximum area that you can. Uh, obviously with just a random wire, you're gonna need a tuner. Uh, the other consideration that you can make is you can cut the wire for a specific design frequency uh, using the formula L equals 1005 1, over F, uh, where F is the frequency in megahertz. Doing that, you can get some common lengths like at 1.9 megahertz using that formula, you uh, come up with a loop that's 528 feet long. Um, at uh, 3.7 megahertz, it's 272 feet. And at 7.15 megahertz, uh, the um, um, design frequency would be uh, 7.15 megahertz, it would be 141 foot loop. Uh, divide that by four, uh, you could put a, um, a 40 meter uh, loop that's good uh, 40 meters and higher. Uh, and by uh, utilizing a, um, um, a, a different feed uh, consideration, and that's outlined in that article uh, that I uh, alluded to earlier uh, from QST 1985, uh, you can use it as a vertical antenna. Uh, on 80 meters. So uh, with 141 foot loop uh, and modifying the, uh, uh, imp the, the feed point or the, or the way you feed it, uh, you, can, um, you can actually use it as a uh, 80, meter, um, 80 meter vertical. The 3.7 megahertz at 272 feet couldn't, can also be used on 160 as a vertical. Uh, obviously, if you got 528 feet up there, uh, you can utilize it uh, on, one, on 160 and, uh, and uh, higher uh, with no problem whatsoever. Now with George's um, uh, 1,500 feet of wire and a tuner, uh, he's, he is good to go. Maritime mobile and all that other good stuff. So uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's nice. But very few of us have, uh, have that kind of real estate. Uh, so um, I opted for... Uh, design consideration one, which was to put up as much wire as I could. It ended up being about 427 feet of uh, uh, wire, uh, just short of the 528 I needed. Um, I really need, uh, my, mine's 472 feet. I need another 60 feet of wire uh, for this thing to be effective on 160 meters. However, uh, at 472 feet, the fundamental frequency is uh, 2.1 megahertz. 
uh, which, which uh, in practice allows me to um, uh, operate the, on the 160 meter band at about uh, 1. Uh, 1.925 and above. Uh, so I'm not totally cut out of, uh, uh, of using 160. Uh, but if I could add another 60 feet somehow, and I probably will finagle something here uh, to get that extra 60 feet so that uh, I can uh, uh, have a much better uh, effective antenna on 160 meters. And uh, obviously uh, there's uh, uh, losses involved, uh, but by using 300 ohm twin lead and a short length of LMR 400, um, uh, from the ballon to the shack, it minimizes feed line losses, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a minute. So uh, that's how we're doing it. Uh, if you want more information on that, again, I, I strongly recommend that 1985 article in QST. Uh, hey, hey, Gary. Yeah. So when you mentioned uh, on 80 meters that that could be used as a vertical, Yes. Does, does the loop itself become a big capacitance top hat? Is that kind of the idea there? Exactly. Okay, I got you. That's exactly cool. how it works. Yeah, and I, I, I was going to talk about that, but that just kind of, I didn't do that. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I don't know if I'll do it. Uh, I think I'd rather add another 60 feet to my antenna. Right. Uh, yeah, more uh, wires always better, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh, so anyway, and, and, and the antenna worked great. Uh, uh, George did a fabulous job of uh, helping me uh, with this antenna. And, uh, and we're going to talk about results later. But I was very, very happy uh, with the antenna and how it worked. Uh, so uh, and then uh, that's when I decided I was going to do a, a presentation. Uh, on on this antenna and uh, so I got my uh, my uh, meter out and I stuck the meter on the antenna and I'm looking at this thing and the SWR is out of this world and I'm looking at that and I'm saying this antenna can't work it cannot work there's no way uh, with uh, it can't be efficient uh, Although, in e despite the fact that I was being uh, very successful with the antenna, I just couldn't believe that it could work with, uh, with the uh, uh, SWR on the other side of the tuner being what it was. So uh, I asked George about that, and, uh, and he uh, pointed me to uh, Mel Vi, W8MV. Many of you know Mel. Uh, Mel did uh, present uh, some satellite uh, information to our club uh, uh, year or so ago, well, a couple years back. Uh, Mel is a brilliant individual. I believe he was a physics professor, if I'm not mistaken, at Akron U. He uh, taught some of my electronics classes at Akron U in the 80s. Oh, is that what he did? Yeah, he's a brilliant man. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, his balloon's still in the air. I think we talked about that uh, maybe last week or last uh, month. Um, uh, Getting close to a uh, getting close to a record. Uh, anyway, uh, so Mel uh, started to talk to me about uh, about SWR, and uh, this is the formula that we all know for SWR, and uh, and we all remember that the maximum um, uh, power is transmitted to the load when the impedance of the load, of course, uh, that being the antenna. Um, is uh, equal to the source. Okay, since ham transmitters uh, are, are uh, designed for 50, 50 ohms, uh, we want the load to also be 50 ohms. So we use 50 ohm coax, and if the feed point impedance of the antenna is uh, 50 ohms, then uh, there you have it. Uh, uh, we got a great match. We have uh, uh, no reflected power, so uh, most of the power minus some losses uh, uh, you know, is goes into the electromagnetic field. Um, however, if our antenna is not near 50 ohms, we use an antenna tuner. Uh, the antenna tuner does two things, as we all know. It cancels out the reactive component um, of the impedance and adjusts the resistive component so that it's 50 ohms. So the transmitter sees 50 ohms and is very, very happy. Um, now, 
the problem is on the other side of the um, uh, of the tuner. So if we consider an extreme case with an SWR, of, let's say 100 to 1, and we use our formula for SWR and, and work through that, uh, the power out is equal to uh, 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 the power forward minus the, the reflected power, obviously. Uh, P sub F then uh, is equal to 26, uh, uh, and P sub R is equal to 25. So if, uh, and obviously our antenna, our, I'm sorry, our transmitter uh, at 100 watts uh, on, the, uh, um, on the tuner side, is going to see 50 ohms there, and then uh, it's going. You're going to get uh, uh, 100 watts with no reflected power. Uh, uh, P sub F minus P sub R is 100 watts. So you're going to see 100 watts into the antenna. Now on the other side of the tuner, that's when it gets pretty interesting. Uh, the the voltage gets crazy. Uh, so the, the net power to the antenna uh, is still going to be 100 watts, even though the voltages are going crazy. If you look, the piece of F is uh, 2,600, the piece of R is 2,500. You subtract that out, you still get that 100 watts, but man, the, uh, the voltages are nutty. Uh, so the only other thing there is your feed line losses. You got 100 watts going there, but your feed line losses uh, could uh, could be uh, could be quite high. But by utilizing twin lead and short lengths of LMR 400, just the the, the uh, minimum that you need to get into the shack, uh, that effectively mitigates the transmission line losses. So that's the math. Um, and I see that my Macintosh is going to lose <laughs> I don't know can you guys see the power thing going on there okay all right I'm plugged in all right so um, it's, safe. You, <laughs> it's safe so by utilizing twin lead and LMR for and a good and a good uh, efficient coax from the uh, ballon to the uh, uh, to the shaft uh, you can you can pretty much mitigate the transmission line losses uh, and keep them minimized. So uh, that's, the, that's the concept and the, those uh, are the considerations. Now here are the components and these are costs. Now uh, I'll, I will tell you that um, a lot of this stuff you may have in your, your garage uh, but these are basically the things that, that I used. I, because uh, I was only going to uh, uh, put up probably a, a maximum of 500 feet, that was part of the planning uh, part that we'll get into in just a second. Uh, but uh, number 12 stranded copper wire is about $70 for 500 feet at Lowe's. <clears throat> and I spelled Ballyan wrong, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, the uh, uh, a five kilowatt four to one ballon is uh, about eighty five dollars at uh, Ballon Designs. Uh, this is an actual picture of the uh, in inside of that uh, that ballon. Really nice uh, ballon. Um, I like it a lot. And at eighty five, they're all handmade. Um, uh, great uh, great place. I talked to the guy. George talked to the guy, and uh, George bought one of these as well. Um, uh, just a real, uh, real super uh, uh, individual, and it's a great buy. So if you look, if you don't want to spend two hundred dollars at DXE, uh, you might uh, try uh, Ballon Designs. <clears throat> the uh, three hundred ohm twin lead, a hundred feet of that's about fifty bucks. Uh, I used this guy over here, uh, the uh, wire antenna center T. That was from DXE. That was uh, George's recommendation, and it is a very, very nice piece. Uh, you can see the strain relief on, uh, on the wires on either side and uh, uh, strain relief down here at the, on the uh, bottom side of it for the uh, twin lead, and it really does a very, very nice job. Uh, you're going to need some uh, support rope. Uh, you can get 100 feet of that at DXC for about $20. Uh, 
I threw out 25 feet of LMR 400. I didn't have to pay for that. Uh, 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 George uh, gifted me uh, some coax, so uh, the, uh, LMR 400, so that uh, worked out pretty nice. Um, you can get a, uh, a made up piece of LMR 400, a DXE for about uh, $48. And the PVC, three quarter inch to one inch tees, uh, you're going to need some of those. I think I bought eight of them for a, for a total of six dollars. Uh, you can uh, get those tees. Um, I mean, minimally, you'll need four. Uh, I bought eight just to make sure, and I think we ended up using either five or six, and I forget exactly how much uh, we needed. Now, stainless steel pulley. That's for the uh, uh, to attach to the center tee. Uh, I recommend a, a sailboat type pulley. Uh, they range in prices and that just keeps the rope from getting hung up in the pulley. That, uh, that was not something that you want to have happen. And these carabiners are uh, uh, handy to have. We ended up using one, uh, but uh, you can actually, if you wanted to, you could use them uh, uh, for attaching. Um, uh, the installation is really uh, straightforward. I won't say simple, but uh, it is straightforward. And I employed uh, a professional tree climber. Uh, he is the employee of the, the tree company that I use to uh, take care of our trees. As a matter of fact, he's pruned, uh, <clears throat> gone in and cleaned out the, um, um, uh, the uh, our, our trees and the, uh, the two big trees in the front and the back. Uh, I he probably I'm thinking uh, George, you may uh, have a better idea. I I it was November, so we started about ten o'clock and 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 went till dark, and that was probably around six six thirty, and uh, just couldn't get it done um, in that amount of time. That was on a Saturday. We came back on Sunday and spend another couple hours to finish it up. Um, I really didn't have a price from him when we started, but what he uh, I said, how much, how much do you want? Um, and he said, eh, I, yeah, and he really didn't say, I said, and I, and I said, how about $200? He said, oh, that's fine. And um, so I think I ended up giving him a little more than that uh, because honest to gosh, he, uh, he worked uh, in, uh, amazingly well. And it was worth every penny. Now, if you're a climber, you can have at it. The nice thing about this guy uh, is he was very conscientious about clearing an area for the wires to go through, almost like a tunnel through the uh, uh, through the branches, and that uh, and that worked uh, that worked out really nicely. Any questions on these components? Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, all right. This is a uh, Google view of a uh, Google Maps view of my house on the right, where the uh, blue dot is, and my neighbor's house on the left. The red line is uh, the the path of the the loop, and again, as I said, it's about four hundred and seventy two feet. <coughs> Excuse me. The triangle on the right is where the feed point is. And <clears throat> again, the idea is to maximize the amount of area inside uh, your loop. So you want to probably refrain from having two parallels or, or a very, very long rectangle. You want it to be more square. Obviously, a circle would be the best. Uh, to maximize the total area, a circle would be best, but that would be really hard to do. But anyway, that being said, this is how it fits over the two lots. Um, I wanted to give you guys a good idea of how that, uh, how that worked. So here's my back tree. Can you guys see my mouse? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So this is my back, uh, the tree in the back of my house. This is my big oak tree in the front of the house. Goes over to my neighbor's oak tree in the front of his house. 
goes to the side over here. There's a smaller tree over here. Uh, I wanted to try to pick up some more length. Uh, so that's why we went this route. Uh, this is probably the low point of the antenna. And this is probably about 35 feet at this point here. Over here is probably the high point, And that's probably close to 60 feet here. Um, and then it goes back. This is his uh, tree in the backyard. And then it comes over and uh, traverses our fence. And uh, um, we're back to the feed point. So that's the, that's the layout or the topography of the antenna. Uh, <clears throat> part of the construction was the planning phase. Uh, here's George and I, we're, uh, it's November. You can tell there's no leaves on the tree and that is certainly a, uh, um, uh, a good time to do it because uh, no leaves, you can really get a good idea of, uh, uh, of the path. And again, as I said, my climber, uh, trimmed some branches out of the way and, and, and really kept the, uh, uh, the wire in the clear. So that was, uh, that was really a, a good part of this. You can see over here, George has his, um, his uh, measuring wheel. And we basically walked what we thought the path would be. And uh, that's uh, how we came up with the fact that I needed 500 feet of wire. And uh, so you can see that uh, we're, this is my backyard here. We're looking up at uh, uh, how we're going to uh, uh, put the, the wire up in there, how we're going to put the uh, center T, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a matter of uh, doing a little bit of planning, uh, walking your path, see, seeing how, how big of a loop you can actually uh, put up. And again, what you want to do is put up uh, as much wire as you can, as high as you can, uh, uh, to enclose uh, the maximum area that you can. So uh, that's, that's how that works. Okay, uh, here's my climber. Uh, he's uh, all decked out in, uh, in uh, climbing attire. And, uh, and, uh, and again, you can see the trees um, without leaves is certainly a whole lot easier to, um, to deal with. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that was that. And honestly, uh, that was the best $200 I ever spent. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, and here's George. Okay. Uh, we had our climber here. Uh, we needed, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, George, uh, uh, this is the rope that he pulled the wire up with and the, uh, and the different pieces that he needed at different times. Uh, George was Johnny on the spot with that. And over here on the far right side, um, George is uh, putting the connectors on and stuff for me. Uh, so he, he did a great job there. And uh, again, uh, this never would have happened without number one, his presentation. Number two, his help with planning. And number three, him being on the scene, on the site, uh, helping me uh, uh, get this whole thing done. So anyway, again, uh, thank you, George, for all, uh, all your help. Uh, construction, here's the... Uh, the PVC T in action, you can see uh, the wire is just going through the T. Uh, drilled this part of the T uh, to put the rope and put rope through it and, and tied the, uh, the rope off to, the, to a branch in the tree. And that's, that's, that's how the thing is suspended. Now the, the antenna uh, uh, floats. It, uh, there, it is not tied down uh, so that it can't move uh, anywhere. So as the branches sway and, and, and uh, it, the, the antenna actually just moves between uh, and through this uh, PVC T. Um, George's antenna has been up for six years. He basically has the same design, used the same T's if you guys remember his presentation. Um, uh, the T's work great. Um, and his antenna is still up and my antenna has uh, weathered the winter uh, plus our spring uh, storms here and uh, I haven't had any issues at all. So uh, this uh, does seem to work nicely. Uh, the fact that you're uh, tying it to branches that are going to move in the wind, you leave some slack in between the tie off points and they're not really tie off points, they're just conduits uh, that the wire flows through. Um, and so that's uh, basically how, how that, that whole thing works. So quick question, Gary. Sure. 
uh, does foliage ex um, affect the SWR or rain? Um, it will, yeah. And uh, George, do you want to, uh, you've had more experience with it. Uh, I sometimes, you know, the LDG tuner that I use uh, has memory. So like when it's wet out or raining, uh, I'll notice that the SWR goes up a little bit at the uh, uh, memory component. So uh, I do retune at that point and uh, I, the uh, tuner takes care of all of that stuff. Uh, but uh, it does, I, I mean, my, my assumption is that, yeah, I, I mean, it definitely affects the SWR. Uh, George, you want to uh, comment on the uh, uh, the performance aspect of it, or or you know whatever else you want to. Uh, okay, say? one other one other quick question: Is yeah. there any danger of the wires sawing through the wall of the PVC, or does it slip and slide pretty easy? It it actually slips and sl slides pretty easy. Okay. Uh, again, gotcha. the whole thing the whole thing floats, and uh, these are not well. I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, George, I, again, George's antenna has been up for uh, uh, six years and he hasn't had that issue. Uh, I will make a comment. This is George. Um, over the time, yeah, you know, I have uh, two areas of my big loop that needs to be retied. Okay, the, uh, the cord that was holding the T has broken and that's not a big deal. It still works. It's got sag in it. But it still works, and I got some tree, a tree trimmer coming sometime that's going to do some trimming, and he's going to retie it. Uh, the SWR when it rains, yes, that does have effect on it. Uh, I have the same exact tuner that Gary does, LDG AT1000 Pro 2, and all I do is just retune and do a hard tune that puts it right back to one to one to five or one to seven. I forget what it is. Uh, SWR, and away I go. Back to you, Gary. Okay. All right. Well, the reason I asked that question is I had an Alpha Delta sloper across my backyard and uh, it went into a stainless steel pulley that was tied to a tree in the back and I used a brick as a counterweight and that seemed to work pretty good and it worked really good for 28 years until the tree died and they took it down. So. Right now, I'm without an Alpha Delta sloper, and I'm looking at options. So that's the reason I asked that question. So thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. I hope we answered your question. OK, uh, so that's, uh, so again, I think uh, I put uh, either five or six of these. Uh, and again, the reason we used more uh, was because we wanted to direct that wire uh, uh, through particular areas. So we made uh, uh, used a couple extra just to make slight adjustments in the uh, uh, in the path of the wire. So uh, that was the reason we used more than let's say four, you know, one at each corner. Okay, um, this is a, a picture of the ins the center insulator installed. Uh, the stainless steel pulleys at the top of that rope, and that's the rope that goes down to the. Uh, uh, bottom of the tree that holds the the uh, uh, the feed point uh, in place. So, uh, and, and again, uh, this uh, particular T uh, with the built-in strain relief and stuff is just an excellent piece. And I think it's twenty. I think it was like twenty-three dollars or something like that. And you, and it has all this other stuff, uh, um, which I didn't use at all, of course, but. Um, uh, that's really all I needed was the T. So uh, that's that, and you can see the uh, 300 ohm twin lead attached to that uh, that center T. So uh, is that, that a Balin on there too? Uh, not yet. We're getting there. Okay. All right. I was going to say so. The four 450 ladder line is going up just to the T, and then it's going right onto the on the wires. Then. Yeah. So what? Yeah. It uh, it it just connects. You if you look up here at the this this uh, T, the ladder line goes through these slots here. Okay. For strain relief. And then it ties off here with the, uh, with the hardware. Okay. <coughs> so the wires, the wires connect and the, um, and uh, uh, the T goes down to the ballon, which is uh, next to my um, uh, entryway 
uh, uh, for the uh, for the shack. Okay, so then speaking of the uh, uh, the twin lead, uh, this is how I cleaned this up. If you look up here, this twin lead goes. Will if I didn't um, um, secure it, it would. It went down originally right in front of this uh, picture window, which is where our living room is. Uh, not a pretty sight and not a good XYL uh, uh, scenario. So uh, we, I, I put these these guys. These are the old uh, 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 television standoffs. Use those, and I put one up here, one over here to keep this along this fascia. And whoops, didn't want to do that yet. Whoops, whoops, whoops. And uh, uh, then it came down the side here. And here's a close up of that side. And this is the whole thing here. You can see the, um, the wire coming along the fascia. It comes down the side here and hits the valen down here. And over here, you can also see the, um, uh, the entrance, the uh, service entrance for the uh, uh, coaxial cable. And that's 300, not 450, right? Yeah, it's 300 ohm. Okay. Uh, here's the ballon. This is uh, it installed. Uh, uh, George made the, uh, uh, the mount, and I appreciated that. Uh, he had that all ready, and uh, we just slapped that ballon on there. This is the uh, LMR 400 here, the 300 ohm line that goes up the side of the house that you just saw. Uh, and the balance are really, really finely made. Uh, again, that's uh, um, a great company to buy to buy the uh, a balance from. And again, it's it's uh, it's not cheap, but it's not two hundred dollars either uh, for a four K balance. I think uh, DXEs is a five K balance, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I could be wrong about that. Anyway, and Gary, I've, I've got uh, one of those Ballon designs on my, uh, and Unin, you know, basically the same oh, yeah. thing on my 43 foot vertical. And I've got nothing but good things to say about it. It's, it's the strongest part of the design, I think. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I couldn't help but uh, take it apart. Uh, I, had I did the same one. thing. <laughs> That's, I, I have one, I have one of their off center fed Ballons and it's fantastic. Yeah, they they do good work, and you got to order and you got to wait for it, um, but uh, it's well worth it. And again, it's very cost effective. Gary, what ratio did you get that ballon in? Four to one. Okay. Do you know what the megahertz rating is? It in other words, it's does it go from like thirty or fifty all the way to one sixty? Yeah. Okay. Because yep. sometimes the balons can't handle like six meters, so. Well, um, I, you know what, I, I, I just, I never assumed that the uh, antenna would work on uh, six meters. I tried to, it does tune in a couple places and I haven't destroyed the ballon, but uh, <laughs> I, um, uh, I, I wouldn't make a habit of using it on, on uh, six meters. Hey Gary. Yeah. I think it goes 1.5 to 30, 1.5 to 30. 1.5 to 30, okay. Yeah. yeah, it depends on which kind you have. The one I have goes up to 54. Oh, okay. Look at the specs. Yeah, I'll have to check that. And I, well, uh, George got, uh, you bought the same one, didn't you, George? Yep, I did. Yeah, okay, so, and, and you're saying it's 1.5 to 30? I think so. I can go out and look real quick. It's right around. Uh, that's, right around. No, it's not that important. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's the installation. Now um, that's uh, that's the ballon, and this I took this picture because I wanted you to see how close um, the uh, ballon is to my um, to my entryway, my my the uh, uh, service entrance for the coax. The shack is right over here behind, uh, um, if, you, if you noticed, oh, you can't really see it, but there's, there's a window down right here, right underneath where it says twin lead routing. Um, that's a basement window cover right there. And, eh. 
and um, uh, that's where the shack is. So you can see this thing goes in and over, and it's a very short uh, a distance uh, for the uh, coax to travel. So you got the twin lead, which obviously doesn't have a dialectic to uh, uh, to uh, heat up and uh, waste your uh, precious uh, electromagnetic energy. <laughs> and uh, uh, then a very short uh, uh, piece of high efficiency coax does a nice job. So anyway, that's, uh, that's how that, uh, that, that's put together. Uh, let's see. Okay, stealth. This is what makes this thing uh, neighbor friendly and XYL friendly. Um, the uh, top arrow points to the frontage the front uh, part of the loop, and then the back arrow uh, points to the back of the loop. And honestly, unless you're looking at it uh, or looking for it, uh, you really don't see it. And that, that um, I can't say that about my uh, off-center fed dipole that I had previous to this, because it was uh, a whole lot more intrusive than, uh, uh, than this loop. So, uh, it, uh, it certainly uh, does the job. Um, and it, it, again, uh, the XYL is, is, is very pleased with, uh, the, with the way it looks. Okay, we're uh, getting toward the end here. Uh, the results, in a nutshell, it's the best antenna I have ever used. Um, it's a great DX antenna. Uh, as you'll see, I've worked, uh, work, um, oh, and it's good for local communications too, which, uh, which, which is kind of interesting. So I checked my AC log records 3841 to 5260, which, which uh, um, uh, after my installation on November of 2019, since that time, and you, if you, those of you who uh, know AC log, you can go into the awards section and, um, uh, get con uh, uh, get these statistics fairly easily, uh, but uh, searching those records 3841 to 5260 from November 2019, I've worked all states, uh, I've worked all continents on 15, 20, and 40, uh, I've worked DXCC mixed uh, 110 countries during that that period of time. I frequently have QSOs with uh, uh, stations in Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan uh, using single sideband, CW and FT8, um, 100 watts. And, um, and it does a, a, a great job. Um, I, I, have, I have a couple stories to tell, which I won't uh, waste your time this evening, but I have had uh, just some fabulous uh, conversations with uh, a couple Australian uh, stations and, and a New Zealand station, and they couldn't believe that I was running 100 watts and, and they were hearing me as well as, uh, as, as they did. So anyway, that, uh, that, that's kind of that. I did take a snippet of my log book uh, just uh, to give you an idea. Now this is relatively, relatively recent. Uh, um, May 22nd, uh, but you can see, uh, and the reason I took this section was because I was working sideband CW and FT8, so you can see, uh, get a, uh, an idea of, 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 of what it's doing. Uh, European Russia, Canary Islands, uh, Turkey, uh, <clears throat> Lithuania, Ukraine, Kuwait, um, and, and that's it. And, and honestly, it's just been a, a fabulous, fabulous antenna. Uh, questions? Uh, Gary? Yes. Did you do a comparison uh, on your uh, results for a, the same time duration period the previous year before you had this antenna? I did not, but that's a good idea, George, um, uh, Zeke. That is a good idea. I will do that. I never even thought to do that, to be honest with you. I, um, hmm, that, that's a fabulous idea. I will, I will do that and uh, let you guys know uh, what I come up with. Uh, Gary, if you had a uh, amplifier laying around that you weren't using, 
Does the loop handle power or does it not? Or does it just not need it? Oh, it'll it'll handle power. Yeah, um, that's why I went with the four uh, the four K uh, Balan. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, KI eight B gave me um, a uh, Heathkit. Um, I think what is this? SB two twenty. SB. Well, actually, it's an SB two hundred. Um, and and Barry said that it'll do uh, 400, 500 watts easily, and and I'm going to do that. That's actually on my uh, on my board behind me here. <laughs> that that's one of the things I do want to do, and that's why I went with uh, heavy duty Ballon because I I, I wanted to uh, uh, put some power to it eventually. Uh, I've never had an amplifier until Barry gave me this one. And I uh, have never used an amplifier before, obviously, since I didn't have one. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested uh, in, in what it'll do. The other thing about this is I'm thinking about the, uh, uh, where we are in the solar cycle. And uh, man, if this thing is doing as good as it is now with this solar cycle the way it is, uh, I am just pumped up if we ever get a couple sunspots uh, uh, going for us. If we get into uh, the new cycle, um, uh, what what it's going to do. So uh, I'm I'm really pumped about that. Gary, is this the only HF antenna you have on your lot, or do you have a tri band around a tower? And if so, have you had any interference problems? <clears throat> I I uh, the only thing I have uh, the only other uh, HF antenna I have is uh, my infed sloper. Uh, that I never took down and I use it as a backup um, and uh, that's I don't have a tower uh, <laughs> if uh, you would like to uh, convince my wife about that that I could have one uh, Marty Marty's tried <laughs> to no avail um, Anyway, uh, no, no tower, no Yagi, and uh, no comparisons thereof. Somebody else asked me about that. I'm not sure who it was now, uh, but uh, I don't have any of those comparisons. Yeah, I will have a tower that's dead smack in the middle of the loop. Uh, George, do you have any comments on that? Uh, no, I, the only thing I have is my uh, loop. Uh, I don't know if you had a tower in the middle. I don't think it would hurt it actually but because uh, it's it's going to be if it's up high enough it's going to be uh it's going to be uh just it's omnidirectional but it's going to have a high takeoff angle like a vertical but i i just don't think there would be a problem with a tower in the middle over okay all right i and again i i really don't know um but um it might be worth an experiment if you can get, if you can keep it away from the tower somewhat, I would think that that would it, that might work pretty well. Yeah, I would need a cooperative neighbor, and my neighbor doesn't like my 22 gauge Skywire right now, so I think that's a moot point. Okay. What? How high does it have to be? Or I mean, can you put it like? Can you do that 20 feet? Can you do that 40? I mean, I know better, higher is always better, but right. Oh yeah, you, you can. Know. Yes, yes. I've had, uh, I, this is George, I've had a, a smaller loop, a portable loop I put up for Mars, and it was only 12 feet off the ground. It was one of the best MVIS antennas I ever had. It was only about 200 feet, though. Well, I, I have room for 700, so 175 on each side. And so, I mean, I, that would be easily to put up. But, and then I normally use that uh, railing top, you know, Two sections oh, yeah. of railing top with a put into a five foot piece of uh, one and a half inch galvanized pipe, pound that in the ground, and I could have four of those put up with pulleys in it. And uh, at 20 Telephone feet, brother. that would be real easy and I'm it wouldn't cost it. much. So, cool. 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 We're catching a lot of fish, yeah. Right out by the crib, and uh, we're trolling, and you know, it just hey, George, mute your mic. Doing good. I'm trying, participants. I got him, Gary. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, 
let me put this back up here. Um, all right, uh, I, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. There's no reason to do that. Uh, okay, uh, th that's, that's it guys. Uh, nothing real fancy here, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the antenna works and I did wanna share it with everybody. Uh, John, you saw it. Uh, it's pretty stealthy, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, it's you basically had to point out where it was when I was looking for it, and I mean, and that was in broad daylight, so it's uh, it's very stealthy. Yeah, and and that's uh, that that's the thing. It's really uh, really pretty amazing. I yeah, I, uh, am am very pleased uh, with with uh, the performance and. Uh, 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 Barry is, um, I think he's snoozing on us, but he's used this an, uh, an antenna like this before. Uh, when he was a younger ham, if I recall, uh, he's told me some stories, but uh, um, anyway. 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet? Yeah, 1,500 feet on a leg. Wow. Yeah, well, that'll, that'll work. <laughs> Supported by what used to be 400 foot tall trees that we delimbed. Wow. So, and that so, was Dave Fyrus, so Dave Fyrus used to have a big loop on the uh, the Air Force the Air Force base in Alaska when he was up there. I remember. I don't remember the length, but it was pretty humongous, and they also had very very good results. So you're saying four sequoias would be really good. <laughs> yeah, plan them all. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions or any a, anything else uh, before we uh, pull the plug tonight, guys? Your, uh, has, your, has your LDG always tuned that antenna by itself, or did you have to bump the uh, capacitor and inductor switches, you know, manually? It it tunes it. It uh, always found a solution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um. Anything else? If, if you have $700 for a new tuner, what's the best one out there? $700? Wow. Yeah. Well, do you need, I, I, it, it depends on what you, you, you uh, want to well, do. I mean, I like say. something like, I mean, like a Palstar AT2K, but then I heard some people say they're garbage, other people say they're good. <laughs> what kind of power, Jody? Yeah, power. Oh, less, less than 1,000. Oh, well, I remember the Palstar AT. The uh, one kilowatt LDGs, they were nice, but now that's that's a kilowatt PEP. You know, if you put ready through it, it'll go up in smoke. But <laughs> well, I had so an I LDG a... and it's gone. I mean, I I bought one with the radio and it's it within a year it was it was toast. So and it I was have, without uh, power, just hundred watts. I have a Palstar AT Auto and I run ready for days in really contest at 1500.0 watts hmm. and it doesn't blink doesn't you know I, it tunes hot when i switch at uh, at 1500 it does nothing bothers it it is a piece of work nice there you have it right. <laughs> yeah uh as a matter of fact uh dennis heats his house uh, uh <laughs> All right, uh, uh, I uh, appreciate everybody's attention and uh, I hope I didn't bore you to death. Uh, and uh, so uh, here we go. Uh, we'll, uh, we're gonna have a, um, as I said before, an executive committee meeting coming up and we'll get some uh, decisions made as to how we're gonna uh, uh, go forward. And uh, we'll get back to everybody. Again, uh, uh, the next uh, business meeting is uh, July, the third Thursday, whatever that is. <laughs> 17? Is that what it is? I don't know. I, I don't remember. <laughs> it's really, maybe the 16th. Maybe it's the 16th. I, I, I don't have a calendar here. And my computer has all these uh, great looking hams in front of me here. So uh, yeah. I'm not going to uh, do anything else with it. So anyway, uh, really uh, good that you guys uh, came out for the, for the meeting.